Assalamu alaikum dear students and welcome back to learn daily physics. I hope you understand the previous diagram. This diagram uh, we've discussed in a previous lecture. So as we started our 2.3.1 uh, del V is equals this is our 2.3.1 in Francis F. Chen. So let's talk about this topic where it is. Let's have a look on the book first. So this topic is here. We have this topic on page 26. You can see. So I sh I'm showing you this because uh, it's easy for you when you consult some book. This is Francis F. Chen's book. Mostly, mostly universities follow this book. So I'm using uh, this book. So we are going to find out what we are going to find out is the value of this drift velocity okay this value uh, the ultimate goal of our lecture is to find out this value how this values come and how this uh, f of y come and what this value is and we will discuss all these equations so let's move on toward our lecture and let's see how we make these equations so sorting a equation from the basic equation of angular velocity v is equals to r omega we know that v is equals to r omega and from that we can say that r omega is r is equals to r equals to v over omega v is equals to r omega and r is equals to v over omega here r is perpendicular v is perpendicular we already know what r perpendicular is what v perpendicular is why we, we are using r perpendicular and why we are using v perpendicular because in previous lectures we have discussed them in detail so and the omega c is the cyclotron frequency we also know that what cyclotron frequency is so cyclotron frequency is equal to q b z over m so this is also a function of y here for non-uniform magnetic field it will be the function of y so now r perpendicular will be equals to v perpendicular m over q b z y okay so putting the value of omega c in this step i put this value of omega c and this equation equals to this one and now from this we can we concluded that uh, if v perpendicular m and q is constant factor then this r r will be inversely proportion to b of c function of y as uh, uh, what this equation means this equation means that when the number of field lines directed along directed along z axis like this let's have a look on this that when we say that we have these number of field lines okay so the circle for that will be small as this field line along z axis these are pointed outward and outward we say that is z axis and the gradient is a function of y so this is the direction of b of z and this is y and this is the direction of del dot b gradient of b and we say that this is decreasing along y axis okay and pointing outward along z axis so here if a charge comes in this way this direction okay let's say if a charge come here this factor is larger so r perpendicular will be smaller okay it will be it will make a cyclotron of smaller radius if same charge comes here it will make radius large okay r perpendicular will be this will be the v perpendicular let's say 
so this will be the r perpendicular and r perpendicular will become larger when b of z of y will decrease they have inverse relation this is what we mean from that equation okay so we have find out our first concept when this gradient when the del of b del dot b and r perpendicular and b are perpendicular and what happens what is the relation between r and b z of function of y so similarly we say that r perpendicular is equals to y perpendicular in the same equation for that so let's move on toward our next derivation for the drift velocity which is gradient v drift you can see on your screen so f is equals to from the lorentz force e is just like our first case e is zero here so f is equals to q into e plus v cross b lorentz force e is zero so f will be equals to q into v cross b z of y this is the magnetic field when we find out the v cross b of z we know that the, uh, how we find v cross b of z we take the determinant as we took before in our previous lectures so v cross b of z will be equal to this term here you can see on your screen so what we are going to do we are going to put this value in this equation okay putting this value in this equation when we put the v cross b of z of y from this equation we will have this equation if splitting this f into resolving this f into its component f x y and z we will have this term and on the right side we will have this term now what we are going to do we are going to compare there and you can we can we can say that we are going to compare their respective components x component with x component y component with y component and z component with z component i unit vector with the i unit vector j unit vector with the j unit vector and the k unit vector with the k unit vector comparing the i unit vector f of x will be equal to this term and f of y will be equal to this term and f of k will be equal to poor f of k will be equal to 0 okay so naming this equation as equation 1 as and this one as equation 2 as we are going to use this equation in next calculation so let's see another tricky thing so now what we are going to do is we are going to say that as the b of c is a function of y okay so starting b of c is 0 plus y b of c is 0 plus y when we apply the taylor series here this b of z is uh, we are also con considering the divergence of b is along y axis so when we will apply the taylor's expansion on this b of z and the divergence of b we will get this as initial value plus at any instant of y so this is its initial value and this is its gradient y into its gradient this is its gradient i told you how this gradient becomes because this is the chain in b of z with respect to y which is equals to the gradient with respect to y so we are uh, looking for the change with respect to y so this is uh, that uh, the equation what we are looking for so putting this equation we know that now in this equation we are go going to put the value of b of z which is equals to b not plus y partial y by partial bz of partial y putting this value in equation 1 here and in equation 2 here we will have this equation 3 and 4 so you can see this equation 3 and 4 by putting the values now i've told you something that you have that i told you to recall some equation that you have to remember you, some equation which are very important for my next lecture i told you that i will use those equation in my next lecture i've told you before those like those equations are these these are the equation that you have to recall in your mind that you have to remember in your mind 
so that you have to learn by your heart that this equation this equation v of f is equals to v perpendicular cos omega c t we 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 proved all these equations in our previous lectures you can see in in lecture number 7 and 8 we proved these equation so in this lecture we are going to use these equations so v of x is equals to this term v of y equals to this term x minus x not equals to this term this this we all we know everything about these equations we already discussed it i am not going to discuss them anymore because i have told you before in detail so the next thing what we are going to do is this is an arbitrary region x not is an arbitrary region y not is an arbitrary region and uh, these are arbitrary so we are taking them as zero we are saying that uh, our starting point is zero so x not will be zero y not will be zero so this will be x will be equals to r perpendicular sin omega ct and y will be equals to plus minus r perpendicular cos omega ct now what happens now putting all of these values this these two values and this y equals to this one in equation 3 and 4 okay <coughs> so by putting these values v of y we have this value and b not will be same as it is y will be equal to this term so we will have these two equations so the difficult work is done now we can say our difficult work is done now and we are very near to our final equation so now in the next lecture i will tell you in my next lecture that uh, we will multiply these we are not going to multiply these equations but we i am going to tell you some average we will find out their average and we have to use some term new terminologies for the average so which we will discuss in our next lecture so thank you very much for your time and assalamu alaikum for today's lecture so watch uh, so watch my lecture next lecture